Hello and welcome to Innovating Business. My name is Luke Bonner. I am the Senior Economic Development Advisor for the City of Sterling Heights. And if you're not watching the show on TV, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Uh, today we have a very special guest. We have Melissa Kendall, who is the Director of Energy Management with Flexingate. Melissa, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Melissa actually has come here from Ontario, so extra special thanks for making the trip out here. Um, first of all, I want to ask, um, let's talk about Flexingate. I want to talk about you and your background because it's very, very interesting in what you do for the company. But um, for our listeners and viewers, give us a good overview of what Flexingate is and what they do. Okay, uh, Flexingate is a tier one supplier to the automotive industry. And uh, currently, uh, we have about 68 manufacturing facilities in uh, over 10 countries, and we employ approximately 24,000 people globally. Okay. What um, product-wise, what's the main product that primarily, provides? Uh, primarily, we manufacture bumpers, bumper systems, plastic injection molded bumpers, and steel stamped. We supply about 90% of the automotive market with bumper systems. With, with every company, there's always a good story about its founder or its beginnings. Mm -hmm. um, Flexingate may have one of the most popular um, CEOs, owners in Shad Khan. Mm -hmm. um, for those that don't know, he's also the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yes. Um, but he's got a very interesting history, very interesting beginning. Can you give us a little bit of a glimpse of what his life has been like, really from the start and where he's brought the company today? It's really a phenomenal story. Uh, Shad Khan came over to the U.S. when he was 16 to attend the University of Illinois. Um, he graduated with an engineering degree. During his time in university, he worked for a company called Flexingate, just made automotive components. Um, and once he graduated, he was uh, hired to be their director of engineering. A couple years later, he opened up his own business called Bumper Works. Um, and it was there that he uh, designed the first seamless bumper. Um, it was a, it's a very innovative, lightweight, seamless bumper so that there was no uh, corrosion or rust okay. um, on the bumper. That was a special sauce at that time, right? Yeah, yeah. Seamless, no corrosion, mm -hmm. no rust, right? Yeah, Which, because yeah. back then, I mean, we're talking 1978 or so, uh, all, most of the bumper systems were three pieces. Right. You know, and it was in the seams where you would get the corrosion and rust. Right. And um, so he developed that and then two years later purchased Flexingate from his former employer. So I want to switch gears for a second and talk about you as Director of Energy Management. We've talked about how misleading that yes. title actually is. Mm -hmm. um, what you do f from the energy management perspective is uh, very interesting and cool stuff, but you also have an economic development role, very mm -hmm. substantial economic development role yes. with the company. Mm -hmm. So tell us what you do um, on a day-to-day -day basis for energy management, and, okay. then, and then secondly, talk about what you do in economic development. Um, well, you know, as you know, Flexingate is a very large corporation with multiple manufacturing sites um, located all across North America, Europe, China, South America, um, and so what I do is I mitigate our price risk on uh, the energy portion f of our portfolio. So for example, electricity, natural gas, we use copious amounts. Those, the price for those is fluctuating all the time. So what I do is enter into contracts with suppliers or financial institutions and I fix the price. Uh, Depend, at a corporate level, right. okay, so um, to, to make flatten out that line. Right. Um, and I do that for nickel as well um, and pretty much anything else they want me to hedge. Because, um, because margins are very tight, yes. generally speaking, in mm -hmm. the automotive market. Yes, in, very thin, in, thin margins. It's, it's, um, it's imperative that we are able to mitigate as much risk as possible on the energy and material side. Yes, right? any so that's raw the material. Point to stabilize that for as long as you can. Yeah, correct. It could be resin. It can be steel, propane, um, any any raw material that we use uh, to make the end product 
because we also make not only bumper systems, but headlights, rocker panels, running boards, right. um, components that go inside your dashboard. So we're making all different types of products. I mean, again, primarily it's bumper systems, but right. um, we have facilities that are dedicated to just one or two products, you know, and it's it's very important to keep our operating costs as, um, as low as possible, right. but also to control what's going to happen down the road. Take the bumps out of it. Yes. For lack of a better term. The peaks and valleys. The bumpers, taking the bumps out of the bumpers. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what, generally speaking, what is the most volatile commodity that you have been have been seeing lately? Uh, steel. Steel. For sure. Uh, we have one person who who's dedicated, his team is dedicated to purchasing and hedging steel. And because again, that's our core right. raw material. So now talking about your economic development job. Mm -hmm. So, which is, uh, which similar but different. So for economic development representing the community, my job is to engage with companies like you, mm -hmm. tell you how great Sterling Heights is and why you wanna move here, talk about incentives because you look at multiple locations, mm -hmm. do any kind of assistance we can possibly do to make sure that entry into the city is as smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. That's community economic development. You are responsible for plants all over the world mm. and finding locations and incentives. So talk about the day-to-day -day of economic development. Like where, where are you doing business and what kind of stuff are you actually doing on behalf of the company? Well, it's a process. We, enter, we bid for work from the OEMs and if we are awarded uh, new programs, uh, they traditionally run five years. Um, at that point, we have to find a home for that work right. and uh, many there's lots of moving parts that go into that decision it could be logistics um, it's real estate and financial incentives and people right talent talent mm -hmm. and uh, so we usually whittle it down to one or two different areas and then that's when I get involved and I then reach out to the state and local bodies, and we discuss financial incentives and, and what, you know, what have you. And, um, you know, at that point, I bring it back to my team and we make a decision. So, for the general public, normally um, people see, oh, look, so and so opened a new location here, mm -hmm. right? There's a new manufacturing plant that opens up. But on your side of it, you already talked about the process. How competitive is it really from state to state and community to community that when someone finds out, like me, someone finds out that you're out in the market looking for something, you're gonna make a substantial investment or hire somebody, how competitive do you see communities and states getting to make sure that you're landing in their community? Um, very, because the operating costs vary from state to state, whether you have a state income tax, corporate income tax, you know, corporate taxes, things like that. So when we do our comparison, we look at what it's going to cost us to operate, whether it's Michigan or Ohio. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first we start there. That's, that's the baseline. And then we look at state and local incentives on top of that. And do they offset? Does it make sense, you know, even though the state could be more expensive to operate in, do the incentives help recoup, recoup that, that cost? cost? That cost down. Right, because right. again, it does come down to logistics and talent as well. You know, um, it's really difficult to find good talent in, you know, um, in rural areas, for example. Sure. You know, so you've really got to, the states um, have been very helpful in stepping up. So um, we had breakfast this morning, so I got to ask you a bunch of questions off the record. Um, I did ask you one, which I was very happy to hear your response. But in uh. terms of states, <laughs> states to do business in. Michigan. <laughs> that was your true response. Yes. Michigan, your yes. favorite state. Uh, Michigan has just, the state has just been wonderful and they have streamlined their process 
I mean, I've been doing this for over 10 years and, and uh, I remember the old process and it has come so far. Uh, the process and the generosity mm -hmm. of, of the state is, is just phenomenal. Yes, and I mean, again, we've, we've done, we've currently got four projects. We have, uh, we're building a facility in Detroit mm -hmm. right now that's uh, slated to open this year. That was a $150 million investment. Um, we did an expansion in Battle Creek, Michigan, Ionia, Michigan. We just opened a facility in Shelby, Michigan. I mean, if that doesn't, if that activity doesn't speak for itself, right. uh, I mean, the state of Michigan is, is definitely uh, highly competitive and um, easy to work with. Talk about your Sterling Heights operation. You have manufacturing mm -hmm. um, around the state, new manufacturing mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. um, what are you doing in Sterling Heights? I guess why did why did Sterling Heights um, look so attractive for this project, and what do you expect this location to look like in the future? Well, this is actually, I want to say, our only non-manufacturing uh, location. Okay. Um, everywhere else, we manufacture and we've got staff. Um, in Sterling Heights, uh, we, you know, we decided on Sterling Heights uh, because we were outgrowing one of our facilities and we needed more space for our engineering folks, research and development. And so uh, the, the building in Sterling Heights is dedicated uh, just for that, administrative. Administrative, mm -hmm. engineering, engineering, procurement, yes. research and development. Mm -hmm. So what we have found, and we talked about it a little bit this morning, what we have found is um, Sterling Heights, in terms of the number of engineers that we have working in the community, um, rates, rates among one of the highest in the country for mm -hmm. communities our size. Mm -hmm. And that's looking anywhere from New Mexico and California uh, and down south, where, where we're looking at other communities that have either military installations that carry heavy engineering, mm -hmm. um, other research and development footprints. Um, Sterling Heights ranks you know, at, at the top or in the top, top two, 10, or, yeah. top two or three. Yeah. And um, one of the good things about that is what we saw was the average um, annual salary for an engineering position is around $96,000. Mm -hmm. So that's a good wage job for the community. And I've always looked at it as, you know, having a nice balance. We have a lot of manufacturing in the community. With a lot of manufacturing comes a lot of tech jobs, mm -hmm. comes a lot of engineering jobs, but also a good offset are those engineering and, mm -hmm. and R&D type of operations. Yeah, and how, it's, it's a need. And how many people do you have there? At Sterling Heights? Yes. Uh, about 35 now. Uh, we anticipate to be hiring 15 to 20 more okay. within the next year or two. So continuing to grow. Mm -hmm. And that was part of yes. part of the, the deal or project that we had with mm -hmm. the city and the yes. state of Michigan was to yes. continue to grow the operation. Mm -hmm. So tell us, um, you talked about people. Um, Tell us about the people side of Flexing Gate. You can, you know, discuss Sterling Heights or just in general, sort of what is what is the value of working at Flexing Gate? Talk about your culture a little bit and talk about how much hiring you guys are potentially going to be doing. It's phenomenal. Um, I've been with the company for 14 years, and uh, my my background is is. Uh, trading energy derivatives. So for me, I have a non-manufacturing background. And uh, the corporate culture um, is, is very agreeable. Um, I like working for Flexingate because um, the salary is great, the benefits are great, the, the people are, as far as I'm concerned, um, cream of the crop. And there's always room for professional growth. You know, who would have known an energy manager would be doing economic development? <laughs> right. Sure. You know, and so it keeps things interesting. And how reflective um, is the business from the owner, which you've talked about before, how just you talked about the owner as a person. How much yeah. do you really think his personality, his style really reflects on the company? I think it reflects a lot. Uh, Mr. Khan is, is a very wealthy individual, but uh, as a person, he is salt of the earth. Um, He's, he's funny, he's smart, but he's approachable. You never get the sense, uh, you don't get a sense of intimidation, even though he's this you know, fam famous person. Um, yeah, 
So he's a blue jean, salt of the earth yes. kind of guy, right? Mm -hmm. So Who happens to own the Jacksonville Jaguars, right. a soccer team, right. a few airplanes, <laughs> and who would have uh, known, right? Yeah. Um, the American dream, as you called it, uh, before when we were meeting this morning. So, mm -hmm. um, if you could give us maybe a couple of things um, about the company now that um, some folks outside of outside of the, in the community are going to see this, what what are maybe a, one or two things you would just want people to know about the community or the the company um, overall? Well, um, I think it's important for people to know that Flexingate um, endeavors to maintain its operations here in North America uh, to create jobs and can, that can, would, no, would not otherwise be there and to continue growing in Michigan as well. Right, which we appreciate yeah. very much so, especially here in Sterling Heights. So Melissa, thank you for your time. This was really good. Thank you for the background on the company. Uh, very interesting story. And then you obviously have a very interesting role to play with the company. So we appreciate you spending time with us today. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Innovating Business is a production of Sterling Heights Television. If you'd like to find out helpful information about doing business in Sterling Heights, log on to sterling-heights.net and select the Economic Development tab.